Rocky Flats was one of the key industrial sites for the manufacture of nuclear weapons for the United States uh, during the Cold War era and all the way up through the 1980s. The project was monumental. The Rocky Flats project had really several major tasks associated with it. The first one was to get rid of the, the special nuclear material that we used for the weapons, uh, primarily plutonium and some enriched uranium. We then had to decontaminate the buildings before the next step, which was dismantling the buildings themselves. The final step in the overall cleanup was doing the remediation of the soil or water to make sure that would be suitable for generations into the future. There was a lot of skepticism, primarily because it had never been done before. The fact that we were able to, you know, take what was a baseline schedule of decades and trim 60 years off of that and turn a $37 billion project into a $7 billion project was, was phenomenal. But in my mind, that's almost the secondary benefit. The real focus was to get it done and to get it done safely. Uh, it would not have been possible without all the people who participated in this project. There were literally hundreds of workers, all of whom put a great deal of effort and passion into this. U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service will soon be officially opening the Rocky Flats National Wildlife Refuge. It really is a punctuation to what has been a, a tremendous 10-year project to be able to take what was seen by the local community as a huge liability, a risk for them sitting in the middle of their neighborhood, cleaned up and turned back to them. This is a very uh, difficult project to replicate, but there are aspects of it that I think I do hope to replicate. Some of the learnings of teamwork, of persistence, of uh, belief in the impossible uh, that I do hope to carry on. The Rocky Flats Closure Project shows that you really can achieve impossible things when people work together.